Today I'm going to talk about yet another RTX 3080 graphics card and as you can see the topic is going to be this Gigabyte Aorus Extreme that I have right here which is a big and beautiful monster of a card but also one of the most expensive ones uh, with an MSRP of $1000 that is if you even manage to find one to begin with. Now uh, Extreme cards uh, were always quite the showcase models, I would say, uh, that were meant to perform great on one side, but more importantly, to catch everyone's eye while doing it. So the 20 series cards, for example, uh, they had those little LEDs on the fans that would create little RGB circles every time they would spin as you can see behind me in my build right there, uh, while for these 30 series cards, uh, they decided against these fan LEDs and went for a splash of RGB lines along with an LCD monitor that will not only display your card's information but also custom text, uh, pictures, uh, GIFs or you know whatever you find interesting to put on your card. But looks are not everything so today we're going to see how it performs as well and how it compares to other 3080 cards I had a chance to test so far so let's begin. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their K60 RGB Pro. This affordable mechanical keyboard comes with Cherry's brand new super smooth viola switches, a nice aluminum finish and of course a bunch of RGB. Check it out using the links in the description below. Aorus Extreme is a big and heavy 4 slot card that is about 32 cm long so you will need a pretty spacious case for it. Build quality seems excellent as well with a proper metal backplate, a huge heatsink, three fans and a pretty sturdy plastic shroud. Now they went all out when it comes to features as well, uh, adding just about everything we've seen on all of the other cards so far, but the main focus is the LCD display on the front side, which can be used to show either some stats or your own personal text, uh, custom images, GIFs, animations, and so on. Now I know it's a bit of gimmicky, but it's also kind of pretty interesting and it's perfect for anyone that wants a card that stands out, because this one definitely does. There is plenty of RGB as well, uh, mostly on the shroud for those uh, vertical GPU systems, uh, but there is also a bit on the front and on the back plate as well. I kind of think that it is a shame they decided against those RGB LEDs in the fans, like they did before. Uh, I do know that it made the fans less efficient and a bit louder, but I do think it was quite unique and it made the card stand out a bit more than this one. Now you do get a dual BIOS switch of course uh, and you have two different fan profiles to choose from. Uh, the OC mode which is the default or the silent mode for those that aim for that really quiet build. Now when it comes to connections you get three DisplayPort 1.4 ports, two HDMI 2.1 ports and an extra HDMI 2.0 port which is the middle one right here. And to power it up you will need a power supply with three 8-pin connectors and Gigabyte included those little LED power indicators that kind of show if you connected them right or you know if there is any problems with any of the connections. Next to adding every possible feature to this card, they also wanted to make sure it's one of the fastest ones, and it actually is. It is the only RTX 3080 that had an average in-game boost clock of over 2 GHz, and even when you put it in quiet mode, it is one of the faster cards we've tested so far. Now the memory isn't overclocked, but that's the same on all the other RTX cards we've seen. Unfortunately, while that gives you some sweet numbers in synthetic benchmarks like 3D Mark, for example, the actual FPS differences while gaming aren't that impressive anymore. I mean, it is technically faster on paper, but you won't really feel the difference between various 3080s. But being the fastest card does come with a certain cost. So the power consumption is considerably higher on the Aorus Extreme. And while some of that will come from extra features, most of it comes from the chip itself. Also, there is no real power difference between both BIOS versions, so uh, the only difference is the actual fan curve and that's it. And as always, more power means there is more heat to deal with as well, so even a big cooler like this one will have to work hard for it. Now, Gigabyte decided to not let the card run warmer than others, and both in performance and the quiet BIOS, the temperatures are fine, but it does get quite loud to make that happen. Now, in performance mode, the extreme gets to around 40 decibels at 50 centimeters distance, 
which is actually not that bad for a high-end graphics card at all, and it personally wouldn't bother me while gaming, especially if you're wearing a headset, but it is objectively louder than others. In quiet mode, it does get a bit better in terms of noise, but I still would not call it quiet. I did find it a bit disappointing because it is one of the biggest cards on the market, and you kind of expect it to handle a lot of heat quietly. Now, what I personally think they should do is just release a more balanced quiet mode that actually reduces the power target, not just changes the fan curve, and that way the buyers will have a real choice between a faster mode that comes with good temps but some noise, and a proper quiet mode that won't be noticeably slower but will allow the car to run really silent instead. This is something that they can easily do with the BIOS update and I think it will really make this card look a bit better and it will give you two proper options to choose from. Of course you can undervolt it yourself uh, and play with the fan curves to make it quieter but I do think it would be so much easier if you can just do all this with a simple flip of a switch. But overall, I do think all these expensive flagship RTX cards are in a bit of a tough spot right now, considering that the actual FPS differences between them and the cheaper models are not that significant. And, you know, that is not something Gigabyte or actually any other brand can help with. It just makes it so much more tempting to go for a cheaper version instead, like the gaming OC, for example. And all that, if you even have a choice, that is, considering how bad this GPU shortage is. And if you manage to find one of these cards, uh, you need to know that you're spending so much more on your RTX 3080 for the looks and the extra features, and not for a significant performance gain. So I would say no. This Aorus Extreme is not going to be the most reasonable card to get, but you know, that was never really the point here. Uh, I think Gigabyte did what they could have done by adding as many features as you can possibly think of, uh, making a very interesting design that stands out and offering the fastest card to some extent. And it's up to you to compare all the ups and downs here and decide what card fits your taste and what card fits your wallet and all that if you can buy one at all. Now, I really wish I could say more about availability at this moment, but all I'm hearing from vendors and shops is that they're expecting these shortages to last a bit longer. So if you're really looking for an RTX 3080 at the moment, just get whichever one shows up in stock, or is extreme included. Now that's it for today. I really, really hope you enjoyed this little review. If you like my content, please give me thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel to never miss an upload. Bye guys.